like to spend uh, some time with our two readings today. Chapter 3, verse 11 to 26 from the Acts of the Apostles and chapter 24 from verses 35 to 48 from Luke's Gospel. The Easter period in the life of the Church and the appearances, the time of appearances of Jesus in the Easter period, as it were, of the early Church is highly significant. Today I'd like us to approach this time with Jesus, with the risen Lord, as the emergence of two of our sacraments which we can sensitively see rooted in this Easter period. The sacrament of reconciliation or the sacrament of confession for the forgiveness of sins and the ointment of the sick are emerging in this period. Uh, why? How can we see? How can we detect this? Um, these weeks with Jesus before He returns to the Father, ascends to heaven, this time is a week of healing reparation and forgiveness for the disciples. Jesus spends time with them. The risen Lord offers his healing and joyful friendship to them in order to heal their mistakes, failures, even, even sins among the disciples. Think of the betrayal of Peter, Think of the other Apostles who fled Jesus' trial and execution. Or think of the disciples on the road to Emmaus who had no hope, who lost faith in the Messiah, in their Messiah, who were reluctant to believe in the word, to the words of the Scriptures. So, the Sacrament of Reconciliation is at work and we can see how marvelously He restores the disciples' spiritual, physical and moral integrity that they can recognize and love back Jesus, the risen Lord, fully. This period of time is also marked by healings. Uh, Peter heals the crippled man. Um, they are offering healing to others in this period. So health and faith jointly are restored. But this time is a profound time for personal healing and recovery from our own sins too. If we put ourselves in the shoes of the disciples, what they were, what they underwent, what they are undergoing in the in this period of Easter, we can also recognize that Easter, the Easter tide, is offered to us for our being healed, in terms of coming to terms with our sins or negative feelings about people, situations. It is a time of uh, being screened, x-rayed by the risen Lord to admit our betrayals, the failures of our love. And it is a time to, to rebuild the desire in us for repentance and to live with the sacrament of confession in order to restore our love. 
It is also a time for healing for us. And uh, when we see Apostle Peter healing, restoring the health of the crippled, um, it, is a, it is an experience of healing for himself. Because we cannot communicate love without feeling being loved. We cannot communicate healing, being compassionate, without receiving someone from the person healing, the healing what is inside of us. So, all these these two sacraments, the sacrament of confession and the healing ointment of the sick, are coming to surface, are bubbling like in a spa in the life of Peter and in, in the Apostles, and they are lifted up by what is happening through their service, healing service to others and forgiving to others. They are being healed and lifted up. I would like to quote John Henry Newman from one of his early sermons from his evangelical period, which is fascinating to see in the context of Easter, that it is a time for healing for us. It is a time for um, learning through our mistakes and failures. He quotes scriptures the scripture when it says that the Lord says, I spoke to you in your adversity and you didn't hear me. Newman uh, meditates on the dangers of enjoying prosperity and success, either in spiritual sense or in financial sense, in terms of business, running a business, somehow it turns us away from God. We lose our sensitivity. And he very wisely says that adversity, time of challenge and tribulation, physical pain caused by others, can be seen as given to us as a gift to God because they, re, these events interrupt our prosperity when we are not focused on God. And uh, we turn to God for healing, for consolation, for restoration. So he says that in time of adversity, it is wise to turn to God. And I'd like to quote him. Let us receive every disappointment, trouble and mortification with both hands earnestly, acknowledging it as God's special favour to us, as a pledge of his fatherly anxiety for our eternal welfare. On the other hand, let us receive every sort of prosperity every degree of worldly success or comfort, let us receive such with caution and fear, lest they should steal away our hearts from our heavenly treasure, and we should find, when it is too late, that we have been beguiled of our everlasting reward. And may Almighty God enable us to open our eyes to our real condition and to beware of trusting to any fancied prosperity, whether temporal or spiritual. And as a closing, closing thought, uh, perhaps it is wise to apply all this to the life of our culture, cultures and countries. 
in times of prosperity, we turn away from God. It is always in times of prosperity and confidence in our own power when communities and countries or parties start waging a war against their opponents. So let this Easter period be the time of honestly acknowledging the failures of our love and returning to the forgiving God through repentance and the sacrament of confession and let it be a time for accepting just like the disciples became aware of their own need of healing that we ourselves are in need of God's healing sacrament the anointing of the sick and let us uh, let us try to see and perceive and experience this Easter period as a uh, as the embrace of these sacraments, the way in which the risen Lord in them embraces us. Let us pray. Let us pray for the growth of faith, hope and love, the divine virtues for all the churches worldwide and all the baptized. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the bereaved in our community who lost 